All right, day 24. We are day 24 of the Vegas. I'm hitting the back of this with this hat. It's hitting my chair. Oops. Just, I'll get used to it. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is uh, Friday, April 10th. Happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday. Man, Fridays are very different now here in Vegas. Very yeah. different energy than they used to be. <laughs> Fridays used to be so intense here. Like, you could just feel the energy coming in, like, it, it just at the beginning of the day. Because you could just, people would start texting, you know, they're all excited. They're on their way to Vegas. And it, it was just, like, this energy. And then they would start getting busy. Um yeah, that's not the way it is here anymore. It is literally like it goes down here. Um, it is so crazy. And, you know, it's all because of this virus. And I will continually keep saying that I think this is a political stunt. For the main reason why I believe that is because Governor Sislik allows the Raiders Stadium to continue to be built. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm very happy it's being built. We we go there all the time. We've been, you know, on YouTube, We uh, that's one of our main things we do is we document the Raiders Stadium. So in no way do I not want them to do that. What I'm saying is if he allows that to continue and two workers have tested positive for the COVID virus at the stadium, if he allows that, then... It's not as deadly as they're saying. And we already know that. We're seeing, okay, it's already going down. So we hit the peak already of the amount of deaths, and now the numbers are going to start going down. So I think the newest number was like 16,000 in the U.S., but it's already like going down in like how many people are dying. But here's the other factor is they're counting any time that someone has got the COVID virus during this period and has died, they're counting it as a COVID virus death, even if they died from other means. So like just if they have the virus and they die during this period, they're counting that as a death of this virus. But they might not be dying from the virus. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they died in a car accident and they're still like, oh, but they had the COVID virus, another death. So they're really trying to create this hysteria. And you can see the media outlets just... If you watch TV, uh, we luckily don't have a TV, so we don't really have to see that stuff. But I know whenever I see one, if I'm anywhere... It just, they are trying to create this hysteria. It's just like this, uh, like fear mongers. Um, and the reason I know it's not as deadly is because if you allow construction to continue. Yeah, that Dr. Drew was telling everyone that it was going to be less than the regular flu virus. The regular flu virus kills around 50,000 people a year. He said this one would only kill... Um, like less than 20,000 and that's where we're at right now and he was right and now he reneged on what he said and he's like oh da, da. so I know that they're like the the celebs are all on this to like continue to keep the fear among the people because I believe they're doing it to sabotage the economy so that uh, people won't vote for Trump because if you have a bad economy, you would hope that people would not choose the same president um, because so many like, they've tried every way to get Trump out of office, you know, by impeaching him. And then, you know, all of these Democrats are going against him. And I'm I'm not political. I, I've never voted in my life. I don't vote, so I'm not trying to steer you either way on that. Um, what I'm saying is I believe that this is a political stunt from the Democrats' situation. So there's a virus every year. Every year we have a flu virus that kills 50,000 people around there, around that number. Every year. So all they had to do was just jump on the flu virus that we get every year and make it seem a lot more intense. And that's what they did. And the reason um, that they are taking it to this level of, like, shutting down everything is because the economy is tanking and the stock market. You see, Trump was really boasting about how wonderful the stock market was, like, right before all this happened. And, you know, this is the election year, and with a great economy and a great stock market, uh, people are going to be like, hey, let's vote for Trump again, because you might as well, whether you like him or not, hey, the economy's going great, hey, let's get another four years of that. But now people will be like, oh, I don't know, we're in the toilet now, our economy, and uh, how Trump handled this, because they keep talking about how Trump handled this, like it, like it mattered, I mean... Uh, if it's really that serious, who cares? Let's just get it dealt with instead of talking about, well, Trump didn't do this. And that's all you're hearing is how Trump handled it and didn't handle it and stuff. And it's like, well, really, 
you shouldn't be focusing on the president if it was really that serious. But they're still continuing because it's still just a political stunt because, remember, this is the election year, so everything that anyone is doing on TV is definitely being paid for by whoever they are promoting. And every channel has someone they're promoting, for sure. They won't tell you that. They'll pretend they're not biased, but they totally are. And most channels, you kind of know, like, some of them are more Democratic, some of them are more Republican. Like, Fox is definitely more Republican. I would say CNN's probably a little bit more Democratic. Just And even though they try to act like they're not biased, but they're, they, they are. And um, what happened? At first, the virus started in China. Well, China was already pissed at the U.S. because we put that tax on all Chinese products coming into the U.S. So uh, people are, you know, not wanting to buy as much, which hurts their economy. So they're really mad about that. So they had a virus which we have every year, but they just exaggerated how serious it was and created all this hysteria online. And Trump, in the beginning, said this is a hoax. Not that the virus doesn't exist, but the fact that it's so deadly and so you know necessary for us to act like the way we're acting. Trump, in the beginning, said that. He said China is trying to fool us, and no one was believing him. They were— Except for— Drew Pinsky. Except for Dr. Drew. But now Dr. Drew has changed his mind, even though his numbers are still exactly on track. So why would a doctor who predicted something and that's coming into fruition exactly what he predicted and now he's saying oh no I was wrong so then that you should really put a question in your mind of like oh wow that's interesting that you would renege on your true statement that is coming true that is not like he said under 20,000 now maybe that'll go over and then he would be wrong then but why would you now say you're wrong when you're not wrong so that's really weird to me Um, but anyways what I was saying was so Everyone got on Trump's case because he was saying it was a hoax from China. Like, don't take it so serious. It's just a regular flu virus. That's what Trump was saying in the beginning of all of this. And then everyone got on this case, especially the Dems. They were like, oh, man, Trump isn't taking this serious. He doesn't care about your lives, blah, 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 blah. And they were going on and on and on and on and on for, like, a month. Do you guys remember? This all started, like, in, like, February or January. I don't even remember. And then no one was really taking it that serious. We're like, whatever, ha, ha, ha. You know, and then... And, and then each month it gets like more and more people are like going like, oh, you got to take this more serious. You got it. And I'm like, but the numbers were never saying that that many people were dying and they were people were recovering. We were talking to people from the beginning that had loved ones that had recovered. And uh, Tom Hanks and his wife had recovered. And we're like, yeah, for example, okay. what's going on? Why are people taking this evidence? so serious? People keep saying, where is your evidence to say that this isn't deadly? People are recovering. Tom Hanks and his wife had it and are fine. And the only people that are dying are people that have immune deficiencies and oh, very unhealthy also, old people. Also, someone just wrote that in Connecticut, this is what they're doing. In Connecticut, a seven-week-year-old baby was smothered to death, but it had the virus, so they counted it as a virus. That's what I'm death. saying. Every death, they're counting. If so if you know yeah, get the virus, area. if you get the virus and you die of any other thing, they're going to say you died from the COVID virus because they're like, oh, they had the COVID virus and then they died during this time. So they're counting every death, whether it has anything to do with the virus. So let's say you get it and then you get in a car accident. They're still counting that as a COVID death because, oh, they had the virus and they just died. Oh, because they want everything. And the number is still smaller than they want. It's still only at 16,000, which is way below the normal flu virus. The normal flu virus kills 50,000 a year. This one is still only at 16 and we're going down. It's not, it, we've already hit the peak of like the worst part. It's now going to decline. So they did not even get the like hysteria numbers they wanted and they're even creating them. But if you don't believe that, then ask yourself why people are recovering. Look at the numbers, go to any of the stats right now. If it's so deadly, all of the stats are showing more people have recovered than have died who have gotten it. Go look at the stats. You don't believe me? Look at all the official stats. They're showing the number of people that have have, have the virus that have recovered and the ones that have died. Way less the ones that have died. 
way less. That is not a deadly virus. If more people have recovered, way more have recovered. Like, the numbers are substantially higher. Like, the ones that have recovered are in the hundreds of thousands, and the ones that have died are in the thousands. Like, below 20,000. And then the ones that recovered are like, I think it was like 200,000 or something like that. Like, I don't remember the number, but you gotta go check. But it's substantially higher, the ones that have recovered, and we're not even focusing on that. We're only looking, like, even the way they write the thing, they'll create this hysteria saying, 1.3 billion people affected by the coronavirus. And then you'll read the numbers and it'll say, like, 500,000 have recovered. Uh, you know... 10,000 in this country have died and those the numbers are like really small for the ones that have actually died in each country but they the hysteria headline will say one point whatever you know like this big number and you go oh man all these people because you just since they're saying it's deadly the number makes you think that many people have died but no that's only the people that have been affected and then most have recovered most have recovered. Even the symptoms are less severe than the normal flu virus. It's just a longer duration is what I'm hearing. It's like, it's like a little bit longer than the flu. But while you have it, it's not even as severe as some flus that people have had. And if you would die from the flu, that's the people that can die from the coronavirus the same people if you can't die from the flu like if you could get the flu right now if you think in your mind i could probably get the flu and survive then you would survive the coronavirus it's the same thing and they're exaggerating that too of like hysteria with the old people it old people always die every year from the flu virus and less have died from this one and you're saying oh because we did this quarantine and we did this and that our quarantine is a joke because it's like don't go to work but then pack y'all all selves into the grocery store like sardines and see all the same people too so like even if you think okay now we do the try to do six feet in the grocery store we're interacting all in the same place so if one person contaminates the store in any way then everyone else that goes in there would get it so if it was really that deadly and that like contagious we would all have it anyways um because even if you didn't go to the store if anyone in your family went to the grocery store or let's say <laughs> getting deliveries those same delivery drivers are delivering everything to everyone the ups drivers the postal men it's the same guys so and they're interacting with everyone they're you know knocking on your door or leaving at your door so if there was if this virus was so deadly if one of those guys got it he would then give it to everyone that he dropped a package off at and the same thing with your um, cashier. Everyone they interact with. If, 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 if you got your hands on the machine and you do self-checkout. And then everyone after. I mean, so this thought that we've con contained it is absolutely insane. If anything, we've made it to where now it'd be everyone's in the same spot. It's like stay home but then congregate in one spot at the grocery store. Where normally people were, if anything, further apart. Maybe at work you were in close quarters, so maybe that's, you know, they're saying some jobs don't. Those ones would have been the only ones I would think if you were really close to someone. But any other job, if anything, now you're with your family all day long. You're more likely to get sick because everyone's all together. And then whoever goes to get the supplies or whatever then can come back and bring the sickness to the entire family all at once. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, this is just ludicrous thinking that this, if you really were trying to contain a virus, you would keep us all in our houses and the government would deliver us supplies in like outfits where like they were contained, you know, like to make sure no one got contaminated. And if that was this deadly virus that they're acting like to shut everything down to the level they have. So their actions are not lining up with what they're saying, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like they're shutting down some things and then keeping other things going. Like here in Vegas, construction continues. You tell me how construction cannot just wait a month or two. Tell me how construction was so essential that during a deadly virus, they couldn't wait a month or two for some of these projects and just shut it down. That one was so important, even though this virus is so deadly. No. Right there should put a huge question mark in your mind about what your government is doing. If they are allowing these certain businesses to continue saying certain ones are essential, those 
I get like the ones like hospitals and grocery stores and things, but think of the other ones that they're allowing and then you'll say, hmm, like, do you know what else they're allowing here in Vegas is landscaping because they don't actually want it to get all overrun with weeds and stuff and look terrible. But really, if it was a deadly virus, I think we could uh, live with a couple weeds. You know what I mean? But no, they're like, oh, don't let it get ugly because then that would not look good. Even though there's no people here, I don't know what the point is. You know what I mean? But they're continuing landscaping because they don't want it to get overrun. Oh, see now, everyone thinks that there's a vaccine coming. Let me share something with you. Viruses do not have vaccines. Yeah. Vaccines are for things like other things. Bacteria. Vaccine, instead, with, with a virus, you get what's called inoculated. Mm. You actually, what? it's a case where if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Yeah, like viruses don't have cures. Um, these uh, people are like, it, all that happens and when normally like with the flu is they inject the flu into you to get you uh okay with the flu that's why when you get those flu shots they're actually injecting the flu into you that's why you get sick often when they give you the flu shot that's your remedy is to get it and survive and then next time it won't affect you as much so that would be the remedy for this so people are surviving it so they could make that um, and inject us all with the coronavirus next year so <laughs> you know what i mean it's probably what will happen so this fact that like people think it's just so deadly, it, you have to read the numbers. I mean, you got to be smarter than the tabloid headlines. They will try to create hysteria. That is what they're trying to do. They love to create fear. They always do. I mean, if you think the news, all the news is is about negative uh, things like be worried about this, be worried about this, be worried about this, watch out for this, da 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 da, ninny nanny, you know, patrol of everything. That's all the news is it's all it's if you watch the news you will live in fear that's what they like want you to be it's like they want everyone i mean they're happy with everyone being in their house and not doing anything Here's you know the thing is that is that what you're all doing you're just tracking the normal flu virus you're mm -hmm. like oh my gosh john prime died of, of the thing yeah which uh um, 73 he, he and cancer. he wasn't healthy he had cancer and, and he, you know, he had been in remission a couple times and stuff. And so the people that are dying from this are the people that would die from the flu virus. And you guys are all blown and out of proportion. It's really, really insane how much people are saying things. Like, they're using adjectives for this. Like, so deadly. It's the worst. This not, But then the numbers don't line up to those adjectives. You're saying it's the worst but then the numbers are showing completely the opposite. So you have to pay attention to the, don't just get caught up in words like, this is the worst virus, really? Because the numbers show that less people have died than most viruses that we get. Okay, so how could that be the worst? Someone says, someone says hi from Silverado Ranch. Oh, hi. Hi. So Silverado Ranch Dentistry or... Silverado Ranch, isn't that... Or just... Uh, all around here, no, Silver. Well, this is where we are. That's where the caves are, aren't they? Yeah, but we're here. So this is also Silverado Ranch. Oh, this is so Okay, cool. Our dentist is Silverado Ranch. Oh, cool. Dentistry. We're in Silverado Ranch as well. Um, Yeah, we go to that Silverado Ranch dentistry. That's what I thought I was making. Yeah, so this seems getting crazy is the thing. Isn't okay, it? but yeah, so the thing is you have to... Okay, our president is really into using uh, adjectives. Um, <laughs> That's one thing about him. He likes to just say good and bad and big and this is the worst or we're the best or you know let's make america great again you know but th these words don't really mean anything like you got to see the facts behind the words and make sure they line up you know and with this virus people are saying this is the worst the most deadly no it's not it's not the most deadly. It's absolutely not the most deadly virus. The numbers show exactly the opposite of what the people are saying. They're saying, the most deadly virus. And then the numbers say, no, that's not. No, it's less than the normal flu virus. So how can it be the most deadly when the numbers are less? Do you understand? Like, headlines can try to create fear in you. But when you read... The underlying print, most, most news articles will be truthful, but 
they write it in a way to, to make you th- it imply it's something different. You know what I mean? Now, some are straight up lie, but some some news and you know papers and stuff do only print the truth, but they twist it to where you might think it's something different. Like, you know, deadly virus is front page huge headline. And that's what scares people. But then when you read below, actually, this one's way less than the normal flu virus of how many people that have died. So be very careful. The headline is what creates news. And that's what we're saying happened with this, is they created oh. the big headline. Your phone, somebody called and you got cut off. Oh. Shit, you're having the best one ever. Really? Fucker. Asshole. We need to turn that off then, like, and make sure it's all. Oh, too bad. We had like 300 people in the room. The whole fucking time. Yeah, let's try it on. Let's try it on again. Okay, let's do it. 24. How do you turn that fucking thing off? There's no way to do it. It comes. It is off. You already have it off, Doug. Make sure I have. Um, it's on. It don't matter. Is it on the thing, the, the thing, the night thing, though? That thing? That's on. And, okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, the, the black, the whoever called for now, so they don't call again. Mm-hmm. And then we'll, um, and then I'll unblock them after this go. Because somehow, sometimes these fuckers can get through. Really? It was going good. Huh? Oh, man, you're on fire. Well, let that one get some energy, and then the, that'll be good. That'll start getting replaced. Okay. This is probably a good way to do it, actually. Oh, yeah. Because... Really go too long, no one can jump. Okay, you guys, sorry about that. Phone call came in through. You know, Apple has this thing. Um, I'm gonna get on that because that's I got such a bone to pick with Apple about this. That uh, you can set up your phone. Oh, you know what though? I need to check my setting actually, because now that we just reset, maybe we have it where two calls. I might need to change that. But, I don't know, Apple has this thing where you can set up where you say, uh, where it says, you know, if the, if the person calls twice, then it can come through even if you have it as, uh, you know, don't ex- allow calls. If you have it on night mode and have it, your um, call ring your thing off. But sometimes it still goes through. Still goes through even if you have it set up that way. So then it ends my Periscope is the point. But I, I have to check because we just reset my phone, so maybe I don't have that selected. But I know we've had it selected before, and calls still came through, and we were like, what the hell? But anyway, so it ends your Periscope when a call comes through, even though you have it on, like, don't accept calls on, like, um, the night mode to this, like, uh, you know. So anyways, what were you talking about? So we were talking about the coronavirus and that the headlines are trying to create hysteria for everyone, like, and... That right there should be the indicator that something's up when your headlines are trying to scare people. For when that when you're looking at the numbers don't line up with what they're saying. So then you go, Why are you telling me it's the most deadly virus or, you know, making us stay home when the numbers are not lining up and they keep saying that oh the reason why the numbers are so low is because we've contained it so well. We have not contained it so well. You are out of your mind if you think the processes that we have taken. Is it processes or process? Anyone know when you say that? When do you say the process we took? Process we took? Or processes? I don't know which one it is. Okay, I am one of those people that um, I grew up, you know, like English was very important. My family does speak correctly, you know, uh, and then I went into the Air Force, and I moved to Oklahoma, and I became such a hick. And so now I have, like, this really weird, like, where sometimes I speak correctly, and other times I spe- speak like a total redneck. So <laughs> Anyways, that's on another I'm note. from Texas. Hi. Yeah, I lived in Texas for a while, because I, I went to, I was in the Air Force. I went to basic training in San Antonio, Texas, and then I stayed uh, in San Antonio for, like, I think it was, like, six no, three months more for training. Then I went to uh, Biloxi, Mississippi for some more training. And then I went to Fairchild, Washington uh, for survival school. And then um, I was stationed at, uh, in Oklahoma City, Tinker Air Force Base, for um, 
until I got out. But uh, I had I had fun going to all those different places. But anyway, so but the, all those places kind of made me a little bit more redneck. <laughs> but I'm originally from California, and my mom is from New York, so I had this weird combination. That's why I talk very weird. Um, but yeah, so you have to know that the news outlets are always going to promote whatever their agenda is. And right now, I believe the agenda is to keep everyone scared. Because if it wasn't, then they would be saying, hey, you know what? Look at this, you guys. Look, the numbers are coming in, and they're way lower, and this is good news, and this is great. But no one's saying that. Instead, everyone's still continuing to act like it's the most deadly virus. Even if they said, hey, the numbers are coming in, and it's low because we contained it. But they're still not even saying that. They're just continually, like, this drama, this drama, this fear, this, oh, my God. Every time I talk to anyone that watches the news, like, when I go, like, to the front desk here. Someone asked. Someone said the flu killed 70 people in one night. Yeah, the flu does that. The flu, they're like, I know, they, they're unaware. The flu that. does that, you guys. Just, Every year, the... 650,000 people die from the flu virus around the world. 650,000 people die every year when the flu virus comes around. Every year. And we don't even normally make any stink about it. We don't even hear about it. This year, less people have died, and we've shut down the whole world. <laughs> it makes no sense. And you guys will say, oh, well, it's not over. It's going to be more people. It's going to be this. It's because we contained it. No. It doesn't matter the way we contained it. If it was so deadly, it would have still spread. Uh, the fact is, if it was so deadly... Then how, why did Tom Hanks and Rita recover from Yeah, the, and people from are recovering. People are recovering. Tom Hanks and his wife are doing great. She did a rap song the other day I saw um, on TikTok or one of them things. I don't know. It was on Twitter, but I think she did it on TikTok. I don't know. And um, she's fine. This is after she had the coronavirus. And she's like 60-something years old. Uh, Tom Hanks, or maybe fits I don't know her age, but she's, you know, their, their grandparents, I believe. Um, and... Uh, she was doing a rap song. She feeling great after having the coronavirus. People are recovering. More people have recovered than have died. Way more. The numbers that have recovered are substantially higher than the numbers that have died. So that would make it not be the most deadly virus. For it to be the most deadly virus, you would have to have more people die than recover. They said... It's, no, she's uh, they're like, did the flu kill? Yes, the flu the kills. The flu kills 650,000 people a year, every year. And every election year, there's a deadly And every one. election year, there's a supposedly... Every, every other election year. Yeah, every, every... Well, what I was saying is when these deadly ones come up that are not so deadly is generally during an election year. Not saying every election year, but saying happens to be that the ones, if you go back and look, were often during election years. So um, what we're saying is there's always a virus. So all someone has to do is when people start freaking out about a virus, you go, hmm, we can use this to our advantage. We could shut down everything, fuck up the economy, and then people wouldn't vote for Trump. And tell me the people wouldn't take it to that level when they've already tried to impeach him. Trying to impeach the president is a pretty extreme level. We've only tried to impeach, what, three presidents? Uh, we tried to do, what was it, Nixon, uh, Clinton, and now Trump? I think those are the only ones that ever people tried to impeach, right? I don't remember. Maybe there was a couple of other ones, but... Um, and you bring up some really good points. That's a big deal trying to impeach the president. I mean, that's huge. So if you yeah, think then they won't are, exaggerate yeah, a flu look, virus? People, yeah, people are saying like, why is Trump on board with this? Because the last time, the last piece of news we had was Trump was getting impeached and he bombed Iran. Right, and then they were saying that Trump was not taking this seriously and didn't care about the health of the United States. Yeah, so and then stuff. he had to act. Like so he then did. he had to act on, even though he had been saying it was a hoax all along from China that it was they were exaggerating. You know, all said it was a hoax. Was Dr. Drew and everybody else that and had Dr. any sort of idea about it? They said, "Oh man, this is bull yeah." And then now all those people are having to 
like renege on what they're saying and be like, oh no, it's oh I guess it's deadly. When the numbers are still not saying that, the numbers are showing that more people are recovering than dying, and that less people have died than any other flu virus we've had. <laughs> Every year, people die from the flu virus, and more die than from this one. Usually, fifty thousand in the U.S. Die from the flu virus around there. You know, I mean, these are rounded numbers, but that those are numbers like fifty thousand. We've only had sixteen thousand, and we've already reached the peak. We're going down. So, like, we've reached the peak. So now the numbers will decline. It won't be as many each day, if that makes sense, because we've already reached the peak, um, and we're only at sixteen thousand. And like we said earlier, too, those numbers are also being exaggerated because anyone that gets the virus right now, and if they die from any means, even like a car accident, or someone said that a baby got suffocated but had the virus, they are still counting that as a death from the coronavirus because they're saying, oh, they had the virus and then they died. But they didn't die from the virus. Right, in fact, someone's, I mean, like people are, if you have the virus and you get in a car accident and you have the virus... They're counting that as a death. Yeah, but that's not a coronavirus death. No, and those, and, and, and for the most part, people are. Anyways, this is kind of a tired. So argument. these numbers, even the numbers of sixteen thousand, are exaggerated. So, why would anyone exaggerate the number of deaths of this virus unless they want us to be scared? Right. The government has two agendas. The agenda is to raise your taxes and to have more war, mm-hmm. and make sure you have babies so they have soldiers to go do those war jobs. And look, you see, right now, everyone's thinking the government's so great because they're going to send them a little stimulus uh, check. Yeah, after they sabotaged your life to try to take Trump down, and most people have lost their jobs, and then they're going to give you a little little check to make it all better. Yeah, right, they're tiny little check, which we don't even get that. But, you know, and a lot of people don't, but some people get it. But it's such a joke. It's a slap in the face for what they're doing to people right now. I mean, and if you haven't realized that your life is going to change drastically, you need to wake up because even if you still have a job, your life is going to change so much because of what they have done to the entire economy. So, like, everything's going to be affected as soon as we all kind of start to go back to work, so to speak, whoever has a job. Um, But those jobs are going to be so different because everything just changed so much. I mean, airlines have never seen this. Um, Allegiant was losing, what, $2 million a day from the airlines because one of the biggest expenses of airlines is the fuel to run a plane. So it doesn't matter if you have one person on the plane or 500. It's still expensive for the plane to go. So they have, like, almost as much expenses when they have only two people flying as when they had all those people paying for the tickets. So it becomes extremely expensive because they still have to fly for some people that have to fly. So those flights are costing them a fortune because fuel is so expensive. That's one of the things. And then all of your other costs, you know, you you have a crew. I was a flyer in the Air Force, and, you know, anytime you get a plane in the air, there's a whole crew, there's a maintenance crew, there's a crew to get you off into the air, a crew to receive you when you come back, there's the air traffic controllers, there's everything, you know, all of these things cost money, and then there's only, you know, a couple people on a, on a flight now that they're losing $2 million a day, for Allegiant alone, I don't know about the other airlines, probably some of them even more, some of them less, but, you know, a lot, and um, so... All of these things are going to have, like, this snowball avalanche effect as soon as we go back. And we haven't, a lot of people have not realized that, that you can't shut down society for, like, 45 days or whatever this is going to be at the end of this. I don't even remember. Well, how many is the total days? 45 days? I don't even know. But, um, and then think that we're all just going to go back and things are just going to be hunky-dory and we're going to be able to just save all these businesses. It, that is going to be insane, you guys. This is going to be worse than the first Great Depression because the first Great Depression happened during a time that we didn't have that much of a structure of society. We did, but we didn't, if that makes sense. Like, we didn't even have the Internet back then, so, like, things were very different. You didn't have... All of these things that we have that come together now, life was very simple back there. You had just very basic living. 
now we have phones, we have computers, we have think like everything on your phone, like all of your apps is a company that needs to be paid, that does some service that now is going to be affected because they probably had to shut down the subway. Like every single thing that we do is now going to be affected by this that we've never seen to this level. We don't know like to the level of everything that we use from TV programs to, I mean, even movies. They can't make movies right now until this stuff stops. So like, you know, if they were in the middle of making a movie, I mean, just even things we don't even think about, like, that, who cares, it's a movie, but, like, okay, it's every single tiny thing that we do, like, delivery, okay, uh, delivery's gotten insane where, you know, um, if you were used to a service, now it's like you got to plan four days ahead to get a delivery, you know, it like, things are just changing to where, that's right now during this time, but imagine when everything starts to go back to normal and once try to go back to normal, once people are trying to get back to work, just the hysteria, the panic of just things are just going to be insane. Right now we're all kind of like, oh, it's all right, we're just staying at home. And, uh, and we haven't even thought about that. I mean, I, I've just been thinking about just tiny little things that you don't even think about, you know, of like the services that are needed, like, okay, our studio – we order parts from Amazon and eBay all the time for our studio. And I just think of these little company, who knows who who owns that little company that provides this cord or whatever, how they are going to be affected. People don't think about um, all, so many businesses are going to close right now of so many things because people aren't going to be able to even provide, like if they're the company that gives you this, cover here but now they don't have money to even ship it because they haven't been able to work for 45 days you're not going to be able to get the thing when you go to or like every single thing is going to be affected at the end of this right now we're kind of in this little like lull where sometimes you can still order some things and oh it's not too bad but as soon as we start to go full throttle again it's going to be a disaster and I think that's the other reason why they just keep continuing adding days because it's kind of like they're kind of trying to just hold back the dam water, but it's about to burst, and they're scared because, like, a revolution can start because people are going to be pissed. You're going to be like, what the fuck, especially when the numbers come out and it's, like, way less, and you're going to be able to try to say, oh, that's because we quarantined and this and that. But no, the numbers are going to come out that it's going to be less than the normal flu virus of deaths. And we're going to know that we completely destroyed our economy because of a less than a normal flu virus. And now people are out of work. We're going to have all-time highs of unemployment. Some states, uh, like Vegas, uh, Nevada here, you know, we uh, Vegas is a huge... Most of Nevada gets their money from Vegas in the sense of for the whole state because, like, especially, like, the weed taxes here help with the whole state. Those are going to go because we have no tourists. So, so many things uh, that, like, an entertainment states are first to go, and that's going to be Vegas um, because this isn't... Inter- when people don't have money, the first thing they throw out the window is entertainment. You're not going to be like, man, I don't have a job, but let me go to Vegas and just spend the last of my money. Some people might do that, but most people say, oh, I'm going to get a tight budget now, and, you know, we can food, essentials, gas, rent, nothing else. No one else, no buy anything more, and that's what most people are doing right now. So any kind of entertainment out the window. So those are going to go, which that, you know, people think entertainment is not important. You'll see how important entertainment is when we don't have it for a little bit, when people can't afford to do entertainment. Okay, so that one's out the window. Now, um, how about any of these jobs that they've deemed not essential? So any of these businesses that they deem not essential cannot survive 45 days being closed. Or whatever the number is. Let's say it was 30 days. Whatever the number is too much for any small business. Jedi Rich owned, um, when I first met him, he owned a hardware store and a market. It was called Tallers because we're like Taller is our last name. So we called it Tallers. And that's where I first met him. I, he lived in this condo building. And I worked there, and he owned the market in the condo building. It was a beautiful market. It was the coolest store. He makes the best stores. It was so nice. Like, he just, it was a market, but it was, like, so beautiful. When you were in there, like, wood cabinets, it was beautiful. Anyways, um, 
as soon as the economy started tanking in 2008, the, his businesses starting because people, you know, he sold Traegers and, um, you know, the market, people could go to cheaper up the store. There was a Fred Meyer, Kroger's. Um, so people start, you know, pulling back on their pennies. And so his business couldn't survive. And we were thinking, man, that was just, you know, just when people were just pulling back. But if he had been closed for any amount of time, like even a week, his business would have tanked. I mean, we were thinking about that, like, man, so these poor, like, these little businesses that are having to be closed for 30 to 45 days, they're not going to be able to make it. I mean, they got bills coming out the ears, but no income coming in. You know, the bills still come in, but the income doesn't. So they don't take long for, even if you have some savings, that's gone. Because bills come in, no income, you're done really, really fast. And it's very sad. I cried. I cried my eyes out the first day we went to the strip after this shutdown. Because this is sad. This should be sad what is happening. And people are acting like, oh, well, there's this deadly virus, so we have to just do all means. No, there is not a deadly virus. And we are destroying what we knew of the United States over a not deadly virus, over a very mild flu virus that is killing a minimal number of people considering who, the number of people that so normally says, die. Worry. So it says don't worry because every company is deferring rent and mortgage payments. Okay, so then once that's over, you guys act like there's just unlimited money. That that's okay. We'll just defer in the bank. The bank only has so much money, you guys. The bank can only allow so many deferred payments. There's only so much money. Like, you can only keep allowing, oh, you don't have to pay your bills for it. Like, some people thought, well, I just won't pay rent for 90 days and we'll just deal with it later. You can't do that. For one thing, things get worse as you don't pay them. They get bigger. Even if there's no interest, your rent for three months becomes really big in the next, uh, after the three months when then the next month is coming up and you still have no income coming in and then the next month is coming up and you're three months behind. And for all of your bills... That becomes massive amounts of money that now you are so in the hole and you could never get out of. And you probably can't even open your store because you don't even have the funds to get it going, to pay your employees, to do whatever. The, do you realize it doesn't matter how much you defer stuff? There's still businesses only have so much money the bank only has so much money you can't just act like there's just money falling from the trees unless the government steps in and just creates more money that's the only way that's going to happen they're going to have to print more money would be the only way to help us out of this or the greedy need to give up some money but other than that you can't just a business can't just keep Oh, just keep deferring to the bank, and the bank just keeps surviving when no one is bringing in money to the bank, and everyone's deferring their payments. The bank is also a business. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like people just think that it's like, oh, don't worry about it. It'll just all just work out in three months. We'll just figure it out. That is not how the world works. And I don't care if they, you'll say, oh, well, they'll know. For one thing, not even as some people are taking serious the thing where you can't evict. Some people are straight up evicting people. So even you go, that's illegal. Well, take that up with the landlord when they come with their <laughs> shotgun and kick you out of your place. And that is happening in some places. So, you know, it doesn't matter what the laws or the rules say when someone says, I need you out of my place because you're not paying and I have someone that can pay. Get out now. That can happen, and what are you going to do? Are you going to call the local authorities? They might come help you, but they might have be dealing with the other guy that's got the same thing, and this is what's going to happen in three months, too, when people don't have their payment, when the, when the landlord says, fine, I gave you that time during that some of the stupid flu virus, but where's the money now? Pay up or get the fuck out with all your kids and, and your suitcases, and we'll throw it on the front porch, and that happens to people. And then if you live in Vegas, they'll arrest you for being homeless. With your, with your kids. And this is all due to Governor Sisolak. 
at the end of the day so we can thank good old Governor Sislek, who continues to let his Allegiant Stadium be built, the Raiders Stadium, because that was his little puppy dog. So he didn't want that to be stopped, even though there's this deadly virus and two workers have tested positive and corrupted the whole, uh, contaminated the whole stadium. But keep that going. But it's so deadly. Do you understand that's completely contradictory? You can't have one thing and the other. It's one or the other. You can't say it's deadly, so deadly, that I'm going to shut down all non-essential business. But it's not so deadly that I'm going to allow construction, which you guys think in your mind, essential business. Why would construction be part of that? Why can't a construction project be pushed out a month or two? What is so damn essential with construction that we, during a deadly virus, when we're going to shut down everything, we're going to leave construction? Now, don't get me wrong. I want them to leave construction. I want them to open up everything. I do not want governors just like now shutting down construction. My point is, since he left construction, means he doesn't view it as a deadly virus. Or if he does, then he doesn't care about the lives of the Allegiant Stadium, Raiders crew, workers, the Mortensen-McCarthy crew members. So which is it, Governor Sisolak? Do you not give a shit about the Mortensen-McCarthy crew members? Or is it not a deadly virus? It's one of the two, and it can't be both. So Governor Sisolak needs to answer that question, and he already has because he's allowing the crew to continue after two people have tested positive, so it's not a deadly virus. This is a political stunt to get Trump out of office is what they're hoping. They're hoping if they tank the economy, y'all won't vote for Trump. But right now, I don't think anyone should vote for a Democrat, and that's probably the first time in my life I've ever said that. Like I said, I don't vote... I've never voted. I was in the military. I was in the Air Force for four years. I still didn't vote because I've never agreed with the way we vote. Uh, our system, I think, for one thing, it's they all cheat. But also, I don't like the whole electoral college bullshit. I don't like how you can how a president get a popular vote and still not win. I don't like any of that nonsense. So I didn't want to be a part of it. And I also didn't want to vote for things that I wasn't educated on. Like, people will vote for things like that they don't really know sometimes what they're voting for. I'm like, I'm not going to go and just say yes and no to things unless I know exactly what I'm voting for. So I chose never to vote. And now I will continue to not vote, especially with what's going on with our government. I have no faith in our government. This is absolutely insane. Um, from the things I've seen with Trump, I'm not saying in any way that Trump has been a great president. The guy created so many um, things that went against the environment, like things like coal production. He brought back so much coal production and things like that were just our environment just went in the toilet within a couple of like they'd never seen it go so bad so fast. Like the environment was just getting all, all time um, new level of like 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 this harmful um, you know air and stuff, and so one awesome thing about what's happened with this shutdown is now the air quality is already improving. They're seeing like the environment is returning because since, since Trump became president, we've seen like the environment really just going in the toilet of just um, you know how they, they do all these tests of you know the air quality and just different things. So now they've shut down so many businesses. The air quality has been really, really good the last month. So that's really good. But so Trump amped all, all that up. Um, this uh, these taxes on China, I think, were ridiculous. I don't agree with that. Um, I don't agree with so many things that he's done. Uh, going to war with all these countries, all these things. So in no way am I saying. If anything, I'm saying don't vote. I think all of. These candidates are bad. I don't even know who's all running. I, I've not even followed. I could care less. I, I heard Bernie Sanders, I think, just got out of it. I don't even know. I, I catch a little bit on Twitter. I try to stay out of that nonsense. We watched a lot when <laughs> Trump was running in 2016. That was pretty, pretty entertaining. We were watching TV back then, but I have not watched any of this debate stuff or any of this nonsense. I don't even know if it's going on with this coronavirus. I don't know what they're doing. But... 
if you think your government has your best interests, you really need to wake up because they really don't. They are willing to risk people's life every single day. They send people to war for these wars that make no sense. I was in the military, and I joined at 17 after 9-11, right after 9-11, because I was so devastated by 9-11, and I wanted to be a pilot. So I was like, I won't go in the Air Force. I'm going to become a pilot. I ended up, um, I got a job on the plane because I wanted to be flying so that I could then, um, I, you have to be an officer to be a pilot. So I thought I'd go in, enlisted, and become an officer that way. Didn't end up working out that way because my mom killed herself. But anyways, but, um, so I went in and I was uh, a flyer on the AWACS plane, which is our airborne warning and control system. It's our surveillance plane. So it's the plane that goes during wartime and you we survey the area because we have a big radar dome that sees a very big area of airspace, and then we tell the fighter pilots where the good and bad guys are. And we also, um, uh, we track all of the, it's kind of like an air traffic controller in the sky. It's kind of what the AWACS is. Um, but that's what I did. And um, I went in at 17, and I, I wanted to defend our country because 9-11 had occurred. But after 9-11, we went into Afghanistan, which had nothing to do with 9-11. It's so ridiculous. And now I'm like, I'm just like, so if you think that our country cares about people's lives, they're willing to risk soldiers' lives all day long for ridiculous wars that are usually over oil and money. Um, always over money, but often over oil. Um, and they don't care. They don't care. It's like, oh, you got to lose uh, you know, X amount of people. So this virus, 16,000 lives means nothing to the government. They could give two shits about 16,000 people dying. Uh, if anything, they wanted more people to die so that they could create more of a hysteria. They're bummed. That's why they're exaggerating the numbers. That's why they're choosing to put anyone that dies, even if they die from a different cause, but if they had contracted the virus at any point, then they're saying it was a death from the virus. Like, if you get, if you had the virus and recovered, like, let's say Tom Hanks and his wife, if they've recovered, if they now got in a car accident, they would say they died from the coronavirus. Like, they're saying, oh, it was a coronavirus death, because they had it at one point. So these numbers are being so just blown out of proportion. And they're not even that blown out of proportion because they're still low numbers. That's what's crazy. I'm like, even if you look at the numbers... They're extremely low numbers. But then the headlines will say, oh, hysteria. Oh. And when I talk to people, like, they're just like, they're hysteria. Oh, my gosh, you guys. So I've been riding the bus, and they, they make the bus. Uh, it's free now because they don't want you to contaminate the driver, so you enter from the back of the bus. And normally to pay, you have to either scan your phone at the front of the bus or pay the driver. So they don't want you to do that, so it's free. Which is great that it's free right now since no one has money, but all of these things are going to have, like, um, snowball effects because you can't just make things free and survive as a business. And the RTC is a business, you know, it's public transportation, but they still have to pay their drivers and stuff. They can't just make it free forever and continue to survive. So all of these businesses are going to be hugely affected. But anyways, <laughs> the point is, so I'm on there and... You know, they have this new thing where they, they do a bigger bus. If the route was, like, a smaller bus, they now have a bigger bus. And they, you know, uh, put signs so you only sit on, like, every other seat. You know, spread it out more, and they say, don't sit near each other. But then, so I was getting off the bus, and there was this old lady. And, um, I like, we thought it, we were, that he was going to open the doors quicker than he did. So what happens if you don't know when you, you when you go to get off your stop? You normally get off. You, you get up, and you wait by the door till the doors open and get off the bus. Well, um, the bus took a little bit longer, you know, to open the doors. So we were standing next to this old lady. So me and this, this, and this kid were standing next to her. You should have seen the scowl and the horror on this woman's face that we were standing next to her while we were waiting for the bus. She was like, <gasps> and I was like, what do you expect us to do, lady? I mean, we need to get off the bus. Excuse me for fucking living during this coronavirus scare. Don't be on the bus if you can't have someone fucking stand next to you for five seconds. She was all... <gasps> she grabs her purse and, like, tries to move away from us. And I'm like, 
I just looked at it and said, nothing to her, of course. I wanted to. I was gonna, because I don't really hold back too much anymore, because I don't give a shit. I'll fucking tell people off. I'm so tired of, like, my whole life, I was so passive, and I would, like, oh, that's fine. Now I'm like, no. If you pull shit on me, I'm going to say something. I said something... (laughs) The other day, I went off on an Uber driver, you know, and some of these Uber drivers are out of line. And I, I'll take it for a while, and then I'm like, uh-uh, no more. And I'll get out of the car. I don't care. They'll kick you out of their car if you can talk. Some of them are just nasty, these dudes. They, they will just be awful to people. And if you speak up to them, they, um, they, they'll kick you out of your car. You know, I've been kicked out of the car. I don't care. Whatever, I'll get a different Uber. Um, but uh, I, I do, I'm a very nice person. But if you fuck with me, I'm not so nice, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, but I, I'm not someone, I'm, I'm actually a very, like, um, I'm always nice to people and stuff. But with people that are nasty, I don't put up with that anymore. A lot of society's like, oh, just allow them to just, I'm like, no, mm-mm. that's not okay. It's not okay to just be rude to people. And especially right now, I'm seeing that a lot in the stores. People are just out of line. I'm like, Pfft. I don't care if you're old either. I'm going to tell you off. Like, I'm so tired of the old people being like, oh, they're nasty as shit. And then we have to be like, oh, they're like old. So you got to be nice to them. No, those people are mean and nasty. There's that one gen. I know like my grandparents were in that gen, but most of my grandparents have died. But they were mean. And now on the other side, you know, I, I speak with my grandparents and they feel bad for how nasty their gen was. The, the ones that are dying now from this coronavirus, good. Some of them are nasty as shit. They came from that gen where you just treat people really bad. You just say snarky, mean things. You say negative, nasty things. You treat your family bad. You pick on them. You just be mean. You sarcasm. You just picking, 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 picking. That's my grandpa was all about just picking on people. And there's this gen, the ones that are in their 70s, 80s, that gen, they probably had really nasty fathers that beat them. I know my grandpa was beat, so he then was really nasty to his kids, you know, and just mean, 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 angry, bitter. And then we're supposed to just accept that? Mm -mm. No, no. That is not okay. It is not okay to be nasty to people and think just because you're in a certain position, certain job title, certain age, certain whatever, that that's okay. No. Times are changing. And I think we're seeing that happen now. You know, we've seen that a bit with the Me Too's. The Me Too's have also gone too far the other way, though. I am also someone that is... Um, a girl that says the Me Too's have gone way too far the other way. We have some creepy dudes, but now the spectrum, <laughs> the pendulum has swung too far. Now you have girls just going at every guy for doing anything and just to get money. And that I don't agree with. But there are some creepy dudes that deserved every Me Too thing they got at them. But see, you got to be careful because there's always extremes. Um, and... Some of those guys were those nasty guys that I'm talking about. Those those um, um, that that you would think of as your grandpa, probably grandpa age, that just bitter, bitter, mean, mean. My grandpa was just mean. He would just say mean, nasty things all day, like he would just call us morons, idiots, jerks, stupid. I mean, just any mean word you could come up with. Imbeciles. That's what he called. My mom, us grandkids, everyone. I mean, they just all day long would just call you names, pick on you, say everything you did was wrong. He's like, no wonder why people didn't have self esteem, you know? And uh, I had a very bad self esteem growing up because I came from a very negative household. Uh, my mom was very uh, supportive, but she grew up in such negativity that she didn't realize she had a lot of negativity, you know? But. She thought it was in a supportive way, like, oh, you're, you're bad at that. You don't need to try that. Oh, you just suck at that. Don't worry. You just don't do that. You know, and you're like, as a little kid, you're supposed to say you're good at everything. So I thought I was bad at everything, you know. But anyways, we got our sparkling water. This is a feat right now, you guys. To get these, um, I normally, like, 
if anyone's been watching me from a while, Gerald Steiners, which are just, I don't know if I'll ever see that word again. I'm so lost without them, but they were my favorite sparkling waters. I used to get them from Whole Foods. They're gone. I mean, I can't even, you can't even order them anywhere. I've looked for them, like, to order just online anywhere. It's like they don't exist anymore. But um, I was able to get this from Whole Foods. It's just an Italian uh, sparkling water, which no flavorings, no flavorings. It's just um, just uh, mineral water uh, with carbonation. So we, these are really, really good for the minerals. People, some people don't like sparkly water. I used to not like it because of the bubbles, but now I really like it. But what's good about them, if you don't like the flavor, is the minerals. You'll get used to the flavor. What you're tasting is the minerals. That's what some people don't like. Okay, let me give it. Jerry, can you take this? There's always tap water for now. There's always tap water for now. This comes from Whole Foods. Yeah, Whole Foods. So that one's really good. But it's, oh, what I was saying, the reason why it's a feat to get that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I think they saw them. <laughs> um, the reason why it's a feat to get that is because the delivery is really hard right now. <laughs> and it just waters. Already is. I'm so excited when we can actually get one. I'm like, yay. Because you actually have to, um, if anyone's doing Whole Foods delivery, it's like you have to keep trying all day long to get a window. There's just no delivery windows. And then once in a while, one will pop up. But, man, it's so annoying. It's like, ugh. But at least they have some windows. Because we don't have a car. So um, it gets very expensive for us to go to certain places. Like, I go to Walmart all the time. Um, and it's it's a Walmart grocery. It's the neighborhood Walmart. That's why it's not a, like, I don't go to the big Walmart. It's the, it's a small little grocery store. It's actually a good size. I like that. It's smaller than most of the grocery stores. The neighborhood Walmarts are a really good size. They're pretty small. I like them. But uh, that I can walk to in bus. But the Whole Foods is pretty far from us. So delivery is so much better for us. But uh, we were doing delivery before all this shut down. We were always getting Whole Foods delivery. But then now with this shutdown, it's very hard to get. We only get it once in a while. But anyways, um, you guys, you just have to trust your feelings. And if your feelings are telling you, like, this is not, if your feelings are even, if you're even watching this, then your feelings are saying that I'm telling the truth. Because why are you watching me? I mean, like, who am I? I'm just sitting here. I'm just this girl, you know, Jai Joy here. What do I know? But if you're still listening to me, then your feelings are saying that I'm telling the truth. Because otherwise you would just have stopped watching at some point. And you wouldn't, and that, it doesn't mean you could stop, but if you were coming back, if you keep coming back, then your feelings are like, listen to what she's saying. And for whatever reason, I don't know why your feelings are having you listen to me, but they are, because you're watching me. And so um, I just speak from the heart. When I get on here, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I, I keep every day t thinking I'm going to talk about veganism. And then I just barely talk about it. I end up talking about this food virus. So I have no idea. I don't plan this to ever. So I says, what are you going to talk about? I'm like, oh, I don't know, veganism. So I've been saying for the last, <laughs> every blog, I say I'm going to talk about veganism. And then I come in here and all I end up talking about is about the virus. But really, it's hard to talk about anything else but the virus right now. Because everyone is in such a state of panic and people are just so scared. And the other thing that you need to, the other huge thing that you got to realize is dying is not the end. Um, I My mom committed suicide, and my brother died in a motorcycle accident two years after that. So my mom committed suicide when I was 20 in the Air Force. That's why I got out of the Air Force. And then my brother died in a motorcycle accident when I was 22. So it was pretty back-to-back. -back. Both of them died, and I was traumatized. Anita says she's watching, but she doesn't agree with everything you say. Okay, but yeah, I'm saying your feelings are telling you to keep watching. You don't have to necessarily agree, but you know what I'm saying? Like, your feelings are telling you to keep watching me. You'll, you'll come around. No, I'm just kidding. But no, I, I, you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying, but I'm saying your feelings for some reason want you to listen to what I'm saying, whether it be to disagree with me or whatever, you know what I mean? I don't know what your feelings are saying. I only know what my feelings are saying. That's the point of, it's kind of what we're trying to say, listen to your own feelings. Don't listen to mine. I'm just telling you what my feelings are telling me, and I'm regurgitating that to you guys. But my feelings could be wrong. They've never been wrong yet for me, but... They might not be exactly right for you guys, so take everything what I say with a grain of salt. But I'm just saying since you're still here, you must be interested, so that's cool. But anyways, that back to, um, I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> so, 
Uh, oh, she, she's, she just likes to learn, even though she don't agree with Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's awesome. Because you're talking about a lot of stuff like about afterlife and death. Oh, yes, that. that's what I was talking about. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, my mom, yeah, my mom. And so for many, many years, I was, I was so devastated, you guys. I mean, I was a wreck. I was that girl that people go like, oh, what happened to Joy? Oh, her, her mom died and she went off the rails because I was just a mess. And I had, uh, uh, my bulimia got really intense after my mom died because that's kind of what I went to. Like, I was kind of only even like, I still kind of ate kind of normal before my mom died. I teach her, I mean, I was, a, I was a vegan. I was a vegan, I think, when my mom died. Yeah, I was still vegan. Uh, but I was kind of like, I didn't, I did a little bit of bulimia, but I hadn't really, like, dove into it. And then when my mom died, I, like, dove into the bulimia because that's what, like, I used uh, to feel better. So whenever I would get sad, I would eat, and then um, I would throw up. That's what bulimia is, if people don't know. Um, I think a lot of people are bulimic now. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are bulimic now, especially, oh, uh, Elton John. We were watching the new Elton John uh, video, and and he said he was bulimic. We suspect Will well, Ferrell. Well, I saw that movie Because Elf. after watching Elf and the ma- like, I was like, man, some of the things he did are things that, like, bulimics do. Like, the ma- amount he can eat. Like, in the way when he chugged that uh, two-liter soda. That's Because me and Jenna Rich could do stuff like that. Jenna Rich was also bulimic. So bulimics get to where you can consume so much food because you, it, it, you get used to it. Where... Um, you can't really even eat small amounts anymore. It's it's like once you're bulimic, it's like the quantities are so much. It's insane. And when I think back to how much I was eating, and I should have been like 600 pounds for the amount I was eating or more, you know, but I was throwing it up, so I was still very thin. But so I relate to people that are very large, even though I wasn't large, because I relate to what you're going through of the overeating. I just then would throw up, but that overeating, that just wanting to eat all the time, you know, the the sugar addiction, it's sugar addiction at the end of the day. That's what bulimics are. Does anyone overweight is addicted to sugar? That's what it is. Um, and sugar's in everything. Bulimia is. And it's not just sugar. People think sugar is just like the white sugar. No, 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 no. Like everything has sugar, and everything breaks down to sugar, ultimately. But Bulimia. you don't. Some people think that Nina was saying that bulimia is a control thing for some people. Yeah. It, oh, it really is. So yeah. Um, so when I was bulimic, um, I would actually uh, what I did in the beginning when I was bulimic is I would starve myself all day, and then I would wait till after work to go binge and purge. Um, that's how it started. But then as I did it for many years, then I it could be I could um, I could eat all day long and throw up. It would take me like like, two minutes to throw up, and no one could even hear it, you know, I'd be in the, in and out of the bathroom, no one would even know, I was, I was so good at it, that I could do it in a public restroom, I could do it in a stall with girls next to me, no one could hear, um, I had become, like, the expert bulimic, but, um, in the beginning, I wasn't, so I would starve myself during the day, and then I would binge at night, and that was a total control thing, because I would remember I would get so much anxiety on, the trip home because all I, I would like stop at fast food to I'd get ton, I'd stop at like five fast food restaurants get all this food to bring home to binge or I would stop at the grocery store and load up on a bunch of food and I would just have all this anxiety because all I wanted to do was get home to just eat the food as fast as I could and purge it was like it wasn't about it, it wasn't about the food you know it wasn't even like I didn't even enjoy the food most of the time sometimes I did some things were tasty but sometimes it was just anything just putting it in my mouth and then that release like was a total control thing and then I would feel better and then I'd be like sometimes people would even invite me to things they'd say do you want to do something after work and I'd say yes but give me about three hours and then we'll meet up because I would need to go home binge and purge then I could go hang out with friends because it it was like it if I didn't, I would have so much anxiety built up. And so when my mom died, I I used that as, like, such a, a, a coping mechanism. And um, I was getting so deep into it that I said, okay, I was in the Air Force. I said, okay, I need to get another job because I'm spending too much time eating because I would just eat. And, and it gets expensive. It gets very expensive because it's so much food. So it's extremely expensive. And that's how I got in a financial situation was literally just from bulimia because it gets so expensive. You think, oh, it's just food. No, but, like, the amount you're buying in 
and it just it becomes an addiction, and then you think you're at home, I'm not going to go more, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to go back to get some more fast food because I'm still hungry, you know, and it just goes on all day long. So the amount you spend is just so much money. And um, so I got a second job, and I got a job at Buffalo Wild Wings. This is when I lived in Oklahoma. I was in the Air Force, and I said, I need to fill my time with something other than eating and throwing up. So I got a second job at Buffalo Wild Wings. So I was working so much. But then I figured out, oh, man, I want to have wings after work. So then I would get a bunch of wings from work and go home after work and pig out on wings. So I'd work at the Air Force, go straight to my next job, not eat all day. Like all day I wouldn't eat. And then I'd bring home tons of wings and just pig out on wings and, um, I got so sick. I started to get uh, so thin, and the the Air Force got worried about me, and then they they made me quit the the Buffalo Wild Wings job because I was getting so frail. People were like, what is wrong with it? People just thought it was because of my mom, but it was actually because of my bulimia was making me so thin because I was just doing it so much. And that's probably when I got my thinnest. Right after my mom died, I was, like, so skinny. And um, then... uh, my sister wanted me to move home. Um, she was worried about me, too, because I was getting sick. And so that's... Um, I wanted to stay in the Air Force, and it, it probably would have been better at that time to stay in the Air Force. I probably would have um, recovered quicker. But when I went home, my bulimia got worse and worse and worse and because I hated living... Um, I didn't like living with my sister, but that was okay. But then she immediately made me go live with my dad, and I hated living with my dad. So, um, bulimia is definitely a control thing. I was a perfectionist. I wanted to be thin. Um, I started anorexia at the uh, age of, like, eight, I want to say. Um, I remember weighing myself at the age of five, um, and my mom was very, very into weight. Oh, my gosh. My mom was all about weight. Um, and uh, I started taking laxatives at a very young age, too, which... Um, that's kind of a form of bulimia. It doesn't really work, but it makes you feel thinner because you poop more. But you don't actually lose weight because you're still, like, eating the food and you're just pooping more. (laughs) But you feel thinner because, you know, like, when you poo, you feel like, oh, I feel five pounds lighter or something. But it's a horrible way to do it. I did that all through high school. It's horrible. And um, I just stopped bulimia. I... First tried to stop in 2015 and then didn't really officially stop until 2017. And now I've been um, no bulimia for the last three years and due to eating organics. And I could not, if I were to eat the regular food, I would still be bulimic. That's how bad that food is. Like I can't digest that food. I can only digest the organics. My digestive system has gotten so messed up and that food is so messed up with the, all the gluten, the GMOs, the steroids, the hormones, all that. When I eat that, I blow up like a balloon. And um, uh, it's probably due to because I have candida overgrowth, which I was talking about that a little bit yesterday. I'll, I'll maybe talk about it again. There's so many things about diet that I can talk to you guys about. So if you're interested, I can talk for days. About, I have... I have scoured the internet for years about diet, and then I have tried everything. So I have the empirical evidence. I've tried every diet. I've tried Atkins. We did all smoothies. We did um, vegan. I've done vegetarian. I've done bulimia. I've done anorexia. I've did the Joe Rogan diet where you wait 18 hours in between eating. I did that diet when I got arrested here in Vegas. I don't know if you guys know the little thing here of that you can have escort agencies, but then the escorts can get arrested. So, yeah, I'm a little scam here in Vegas. So, anyways, I got arrested here in Vegas, and I was doing the Joe Rogan diet where you don't eat for 18 hours. What happened to be I hadn't eaten for 18 hours, and then I got arrested, and then I didn't want to eat the food in in jail because it wasn't organic so I had to spend 30 hours in jail (laughs) and didn't get to eat and then when I got out Jared said cook me something this was like uh two years ago I think two or three years man two years two years ago 2018 yeah I was in jail for 30 hours here at Clark County (sighs) 
bunch of assholes. Anyways, they, they arrest the girls. And then he pays fees, and then they're back on your merry way. It's it's just a scam here in Vegas. That's another thing they didn't they won't have right now with the closed casinos. They can't arrest all the girls, so they'll be bummed they're not getting their money. From they they love those little misdemeanors, and then they and then you go pay a lawyer, and then you get, you know, it's just a little scam here, and you pay a ridiculous lawyer thousand dollars who doesn't even show up, and he's such a slob. It's such a scam here in Vegas. It's insane. I was so disappointed in their court system. The judge was drunk, too. Yeah, I did, twice. She, twice. And she came in hungover, and she was drunk. And she literally was saying that she had partied the she night before. She no, she was saying, oh, man, I had a wild night. And she can't, yeah. No, I mean, so she was still drunk. And uh, she had her glasses on, like her sunglasses, and her hair wasn't done both times. And she was late. And then um, your lawyer didn't even show up. And my lawyer didn't show up. And he, when he did show up, he was the the. He looked like a homeless person. I'm not kidding. He had on slouchy slacks. His shirt was half tucked in, half coming in, completely wrinkled um, shirt. He had a beard, like it's like a grown out beard. You know, like not like a real one, like a like the, the at, like the one that, the five o'clock thing, but went too long, like the next day one. You know. Like the non-shaven beard and mustache thing, his hair was greasy as shit. Like he had just come from I fucking mean, the judge, off. maybe. Maybe him and the judge. Off. She said bye. Huh? Yeah. She says, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, him and the judge maybe were getting it on in the back before or something. But I'm telling you, they were such a mess. And I'm like, this is a joke. This is a joke. And I had to go five times, five times for them to tell me I had to spend two hundred dollars on a class. Yeah, don't do it again. But overall, I had to spend, like, uh, what did it be, like $2,000, I think. Yeah, he was partying with the judge, maybe. Yeah, I mean, they all looked like they, and they did, they all, hey, uh, oh, what's that? they were talking about, what's that bar you like, judge? I mean, they were young. No, I'm not kidding. It is a joke here. It is absolutely, and I came in all dressed nice. Everyone was dressed ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. Like, they didn't even dress nice, the lawyers and nothing. And the judge was, she had her, you know, black thing, but she first came in, one of the times I was there early, and she came in when she wasn't late, but she came in and she's showing everyone this pillow and talking about all this stuff, and she's in a, she was had on a very slutty dress for a judge. She had her boobs hanging out, and she's all flirting with her, you know, the whatever, the, the bailiffs and everyone and talking about this pillow she got and all this and I'm like I didn't know she was the judge that was the very first that's right that was the very first time I'm like oh this lady seems nice then she comes back with her the black thing on like that was the judge and then the next two times I go she's like comes in with her glasses on all hung over and talking about this bar she went to and I'm like this is a joke here in Vegas this is an absolute joke Joke. Yeah. Anyways, okay. All right, that was that was interesting. So uh, let's wrap it up and thanks, guys. It's been an thanks, hour. We get get hanging out with you guys this morning. We'll be back again tomorrow. And maybe Jedi Joe will do a makeup scope later today if she feels like it. We well, I already did my makeup, so won't be doing makeup probably scope. Probably won't be happening. But so. maybe a cooking bit. But know. we'll probably see you guys a little later today, uh, or later today or tomorrow. I need to cook breakfast. What time so be sure follow, follow us on JediRich.com. Yep. Oh, yeah. Follow us at uh, JediRich.com. You can find out all of our stuff. On YouTube, we're Jedi Rich Creative Producer. And then on Twitter, you can follow Jedi Rich Com. Um, so those are the best places to find us. Uh, we have a bunch of other channels, but just those are the main ones. And uh, we're primarily doing Periscope and YouTube right now. So um, that's that's kind of where we're at. Oh, we're oh we're starting Vimeo, right? You got yeah, um, back on Vimeo, too. back on Hello, Vimeo. How are you doing? So you can check us out on Vimeo. But we're not really doing as much on Twitter. We were all about Twitter for a minute, but the Twitter made us mad. They kept taking down all of our accounts, so we're tired of Twitter for a minute. So we're doing just Periscope, which goes to Twitter, but you know it's. Thanks for watching. Anyways, everyone. Really thanks guys. We had a Have good fun. Time. Not to death, I'm not impressed. I'm not amused, I'm not confused, I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business, I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin', this is not for you.
I'm a jail, my beats with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the market, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. Like I'm still a day, yo. And it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out. Check it out.